from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering VTUG's New England Winter Warmer 2017. Now your host, Stu Miniman. And we're back. This is SiliconANGLE Media's presentation of the Cube. We're the worldwide leader in live enterprise tech coverage. Here at the VTUG, talk about a broad spectrum of technologies, talking about virtualization, cloud computing, uh, developers, and uh, the keynotes, uh, one of the keynotes this morning uh, was by my, my guest that's joining me, Dewey Sasser, who's the cloud solutions architect at Align Software. Uh, talked about AWS and what it's like to be as a, as a user of public cloud, and, and you're a consultant uh, that, that works on uh, the, the AWS offerings. So yeah, uh, yes. thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, so, so, so Dewey, um, I mean, I noticed a lot of cats in there. Um, <laughs> does that mean that you know, public cloud? I'm, I'm going to get some claws, and some people will be allergic to it, uh, and it'll be challenging. Or is it just because you know, uh, you know, cats and cats are great? Well, I, I think it's actually a, um, a feature of working with developers. You're going to get yeah. the claws. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It, it, it was funny. I, 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 I told you the uh, the Docker keynote, which also was talking about developers. Up, oh, wait. There's a, the 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 demo was a cat gif that comes up, and you refresh it every time, and it's a different cat gif. So. Um, <laughs> that I could go in and, and hack at that. But uh, at this conference, uh, it's been interesting to watch the maturation of the last few years. You know, people that you know, understand virtualization, uh, things like VMware, uh, and you know, getting more and more comfortable with public cloud. Uh, talk to us a little bit about you know, how long have you been doing public cloud? What kind of things are you helping companies with? Okay. So my history is I was actually a software developer, and then I moved into private cloud, very much what this conference is has historically done. And the last few years I've, I've segued that into public cloud. Um, the, basically I was here today to talk about uh, the social aspects of public cloud, how to adapt your company to it, and what are the particular challenges you have in a cloud environment. You start encountering some of them in a private cloud environment uh, and with general virtualization, but a lot more when you move into public cloud and everything becomes easily accessible to developers. Yeah, I mean, I'm an infrastructure guy by background and you know, for at least the last decade we've been talking about, you know, we need to get out of our silos, we need to rechain, you know, rethink how the organization is made up, uh, especially from the infrastructure level, but from an organizational, uh, you know, area, I, I need to think about services more, I need to think about you know, architecture more. Uh, I mean, I think the big challenge of our industry is really about building distributed systems and the impact that that has across the board. And what I saw in your presentation was a lot of that is right. Who owns what, you know, what are common services, what are done by you know, various parts of the organization and how that plays out. Maybe you can you know, give us a thumbnail of uh, how some of that looks. So the, the key from my perspective is you have to make sure that the responsibility and authority are always aligned and you have to put the actual power to do something in the hands of the people capable of doing something. So uh, there's no point uh, waking an ops guy up in the middle of the night for a code problem. There's no point making a, waking a code guy up in the middle of the night for an ops pro, uh, problem. Uh, so you, the, the key here, I think uh, as we move into public cloud, the basic momentum of DevOps and agile processes and public cloud are really coming together to meet in one spot. And in order to deal with this, we need to change it so that people can be responsible for what's going on in a minute-to-minute -minute basis, whereas we used to do it in a week-to-week -week basis. Yeah, so, you know, Dewey, I completely agree that we need to get kind of, you know, the responsibility and, you know, what you're doing all aligned. You know, how do you handle, I mean, those communication gaps or everybody's, no, that's not me, that's, you know, that group and that falls, you know, when I go agile, you know, that goes away with the waterfall world or, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's not a silver bullet, right? It, it's <laughs> not a silver bullet. Uh, fundamentally, they're all uh, people problems, communication problems, and waterfall, agile, all of these are just different ways of solving the problems. All right. Um, Great, so you know, you're, you know, I know you can't talk about the customer itself, but you know, mobile is involved heavily, you know, yes. streaming type of things uh, are involved. Uh, some of the things, I, I know when I went to AWS reInvent uh, the first time, gosh, you know, four or five years ago, it's, you know, lots of those, you know, it, it's new applications, you know, gaming, uh, you know, uh, is heavily involved out there. Um, 
from an application standpoint, is it does it help to be kind of that new type of application that's starting from the ground up, or uh, you know, what about you know companies that have legacy environments? How do you see uh, public cloud bridging some of that gap? So there, there are different techniques you use when you're going in with a new environment, going with uh, all the buzzwords and, and um, RESTful services. Uh, Phoenix server patterns, which is basically a, a pattern where you burn down the server. Instead of debugging it, you just torch it in place and put up a new one, versus the old style of doing things where you really cared about each individual server. Uh, you would go and debug the problems, you would fix it up. Public cloud can be used for both of them. It uh, really comes into its own for the Phoenix server, for the agile, for the elastic stuff. There's so much you can do there that you really can't do in your data center without way more investment than it's worth it for almost anyone to do. But for legacy products, yes, the cloud also works. I've also done a number of legacy product migrations into the public cloud. And it's just uh, different tools and te techniques, though you can take advantage of some of the elasticity and some of the uh, dynamic provisioning you get from the public cloud and that too. Yeah, so when, when, when you engage with a customer, do you have to kind of understand their maturity of their organization? Uh, I, I know you've worked with Colos in the past. Um, you, you know, certain people have certain skill sets and understand certain things. Moving to the cloud, is there you know, a certain amount of education, training? Do you gauge if they're ready uh, for a certain type of environment or uh, do, do you just kind of help them uh, say, you no, know, here's the new way and you're going to catch up? Uh, it, you absolutely have to pay attention to the individual customer. Yeah. Uh, Amazon actually has, I think, a five-step model of cloud ad adoption that I found pretty accurate. People start with a trial, you know, let me get my credit card and, and try a machine there, move some dev workloads, move some non-critical production workloads. It, it's a pretty good model. It, it varies. Uh, most of the customers I talk to, you don't have to explain public cloud anymore. They've heard about it. They know it's a thing. Uh, you need to explain to them what it is and where it's good for their problems and where it's not good for their problems. All right, uh, maybe you know, what, what are some of the pitfalls there? What kind of things should people avoid or make sure that they don't try to you know, shoehorn into the public cloud or uh, things that they need to prepare themselves for? Uh, that, that's really interesting. I would say that at this point, the public cloud is pretty much mature enough to handle any workload. The question is, is it cost effective for you? There are a few workloads. Um, not terribly many that if you already have an investment in a colo facility, might not be worth moving into the public cloud. On the other hand, if you're willing to do a little bit of work, you may be able to actually achieve some cost savings there. Uh, build test uh, is a great example, which traditionally has been on a dedicated rack, but if you actually look at the time spent uh, using any individual machine, Taking advantage of public cloud elasticity, even for the more traditional test environment, can really get you a good cost savings. Yeah, uh, the, the the term that uh, I know AWS has used it, but uh, you know we we've been using it for a long time. Is companies need to get rid of what we call undifferentiated heavy lifting. Um, I, I try to poke a little bit more and say, for the enterprise, there's lots of stuff that you suck at that you really shouldn't do. <laughs> there are very few companies out here that are really good at building data centers, and if you're an enterprise out there, you're not one of them because the ones that are do that, they're real estate and investment you know, people, like companies like Equinix know how to build data centers. There are a few companies from the you know, physical layer, the slab, the power and cooling. Uh, you mentioned, you know, there, there's, don't build another data center because any company that I've built with that's you know, on the enterprise side that built a data center said, I hope that's the last time I ever <laughs> have to do it because boy, I learned way too much and I know I didn't do good. You know, the PUE is going to be much better going to either a colo or a cloud provider and as you work up the stack, uh, there's Things that you know, I don't need to be the expert. As you know, God, we we all spent you know how many decades did we spend you know putting out our you know email server. It's like well, there's services. Microsoft's pushing everybody to just say buy it as a SaaS model. So um, I guess the the question I have for you, right, is you know what does in-house IT need to have as their core skill set, uh, and what stuff should they just look really be able to shift over uh, and you know put that onto platforms, put that onto vendors, put that onto consultants. So uh, a lot of the fundamentals remain the same. Uh, networking is networking, whether it's virtual or physical. Uh, security is also security. There are some different things that you care about in the cloud, but the mindset is still the same. So those two approaches uh, still work well. Understanding of your application, what's important to your application, 
what's important about the security of your application, what your customers' needs, those are all important things that you don't want to outsource. Yeah. How to configure a particular network in a particular environment to achieve your goals, those are something you can work with a, a vendor to do for you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you use the term outsourcing, and I'm saying the old outsourcing model is, is mostly going away. It's, I don't just want to take my mess and think that somebody else can do it for less, right? That, that didn't work, it failed most of the time. Companies need to understand what's strategic and skill sets that I need to have, and I need to have a good understanding of you know, platforms and vendors and solutions that offer it. You know, consultants and systems integrators can help along that line, but I can't be blinded to say, okay, you, know, you go do this and I'm not going to think about it. It's, there are services that I will consume, things like SaaS or you know, you know, services on public cloud. You know, Amazon's been doing a lot to move up the stack, everything, you know, uh, you know, Redshift and many other services up there where uh, I'm not outsourcing it, I'm leveraging kind of standard offerings that are out there in, in many ways it replaces the old you know, shrink wrap software that's out there. Right. Yeah. The best way I've uh, heard it put is don't outsource your core competency. Yeah. So a company needs to really understand what their core competency is and I think what Amazon is doing going up the stack with Redshift, uh, with Elastic Container Service, with uh, Lambda, is you can really focus in and tighten your efforts to just your core competency, to what really delivers value to your customer. Let Amazon worry about the rest. Yeah, so I, I'm curious, you know, if I think back a couple of years ago, there are certain people in IT that would look at something like Amazon and say, that's a threat to my job. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, what do I do? This public cloud, I don't understand it, they're trying to take my job away, everything will just be automated. H how do you look at that these days, uh, you know, and the, the relationship between, you know, IT and, and public cloud? So I've, I've never found uh, a successful IT person who doesn't want to learn new technologies. It, it just doesn't happen, even if you're trying to stay in a colo facility, you need to uh, follow progress. And public cloud is just progress. It's a larger step than we've experienced before, but I also don't really know any out of work IT people who have been unable to make that transition. I can see how they would look at it as a threat to their job. It is a threat to the old way of doing things, but the PC was a threat to the mainframe, the web a threat to the PC. Things change, we're still smart people solving problems, and we're still going to need smart people to solve problems. Yeah, I, I, I love that, right. You, we need to always you know, keep learning, you know, stay curious, uh, keep working on it. Uh, I guess the last question I have for you is, you know, does it all go public cloud? You know, what, 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 what's, I, I know you're talking about AWS and the like. Uh, there's a lot of different solutions out here. Uh, many people, you know, building on-premises um, as that, that spectrum of, you know, all cloud, you know, most public, uh, most staying private. You know, where do you see things, you know, kind of today and playing out over the next few years? Uh, I think uh, very much what you said uh, with, you don't build your own data center. In the last 10 years, people don't build their own data centers, they'll co-locate. They'll, they'll rent space from someone who has built their own data center. I think over the next 10 years, we're going to see more of that with public cloud. People are not going to even co-locate, they're just going to go and buy it from a public cloud. The pricing will change, what public clouds offer will change, but I think that's the way we're moving is, over time we'll see fewer and fewer people managing their own physical hardware in an environment that is dedicated to them. Dewey Sasser, really appreciate you coming here, sharing with our audience everything that's going on. Uh, public cloud, you know, huge trends. So many shows we'll be covering this year. Uh, AWS reInvent every year. I'll be at the Google Cloud event, uh, you know, at the beginning of March, and uh, lots more on siliconangle.tv and siliconangle.com. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from the VTUG. You're watching theCUBE.